This is Tim Fraser from Forces, and I'm here with uh, Shruti Gandhi. She is here to support the International Women's Day event that Forces is, is putting on. So I'm very proud to have uh, Shruti with us. Uh, Shruti, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and, and uh, what you have been doing and why uh, is this passion of uh, Women's uh, Day uh, important for you to come and, and spend some time with us today? First of all, Tim, thank you for having me. Um, thank you, Forces. Thank you, Shruti. Um, Excited to just talk a little bit more about my journey. I was an engineer and then I became a founder. And about a decade ago, five years ago, into the venture capital journey, I started my own fund. Our fund invests in enterprise B2B companies. And we, we like investing first checks into a founder journey. Um, and yeah, my background is, as an engineer lends well into kinds of things I invest in, which is, you know, big data, data, AI, machine learning, things like that. So why am I excited to be here? I think, honestly, we women don't have the same opportunities, compensation, rights taken as centuries to be here. And it's been only in the last few decades that we have actually started working in the workforce, but many, many things have not caught up to that. And in different professions, the number of women represented are pretty low. So in my own career journey, starting as an engineer, the number of women engineers have been drastically lower than number of men. And then I went into an entrepreneurship role. The latest stat was last year, less than 2% 2% of women were funded in the entire venture capital founder ecosystem. So of the $100 that go to anyone in the founding community, maybe two go to women founders or less. Very drastically low number. And then I'm in this profession, third career of mine, which is in venture capital, starting a fund. And less than 1% of women are VCs, venture, you know, venture capitalists. And within that, much, much, much smaller percentage of them run their venture funds. So I'm doing some of these things. I've experienced some of the, the burn, the pain, the, the, the glory, all of it, if you will, doing this and marching along on your own. So my personal passion is to be able to inspire as many women, people to be doing what they do outside of the comfort zone and need to be an example of that uh, because I started out with not much at a given time. Very nice. So uh, first of all, I've obviously had a chance to uh, look you up a little bit, get to know you a little bit for the interview today. And I'm quite impressed with some of the comments that people have made about uh, how you get engaged and, and how you get hands-on in your in your VC work and, and support the, the teams are doing that. So that's that's a, that's that's a, that's pretty awesome. I mean, we all like to watch some of the uh, investment shows on television and uh, I commend the ones that get the hands dirty to do the work. And uh, and that that's actually takes, uh, that's a really big deal for me because as you pointed out, um, working in tech, there are not a lot of women uh, that number one are in the field. And number two, the ones that are don't always have the same opportunities. And I'm very pleased uh, to, to see the, the the enthusiasm that you put forward to towards that. So so tell me about a little bit about where did you get your inspiration from? About what, did you have a mentor that kind of guided you to, to do this? Are you are you leading your uh, making your own path here? A uh, good question. I believe mentorship is a evolving a journey. I haven't had a one particular mentor per se for one because I mean you can't having multiple professions and. Uh, career paths, you can't just have one person that kind of is a, is your life mentor in some ways. Sure. But I have had amazing people that have acted at, as mentor for different problems I've experienced in different parts of my career. You know, people, parts of uh, running a venture fund or mm-hmm. people, you know, helping me through how to think about deal making or how successful people have done it in the past. So I think for me, it changes, you know, depending on the situation. And then I've had different people come help me all throughout different times of my life. So a little bit of translation is you uh, clearly have some smart credentials if you look, if people look you up. Uh, I would encourage the people who are watching this video to really look at your educational track and your, your work track that I've uh, learned a little bit about you. But, but there's no substitute for hard work. And I would say it's more than that. It's the tenacity that I, I see in, in the women leaders that I have worked with. I've been very impressed with the women leaders because you have a lot harder uh, role to to overcome. 
uh, and it takes more effort and makes a lot of tenacity to really go through the tough things that unfortunately this, uh, especially the IT business, we have fewer mentors and few women, but also in general, women in business have always had, um, you know, let's just say all the same opportunities at the same level as men. And it is changing. So what does choose to challenge mean to you? How would you paraphrase the tagline for that in your own words? Choose to challenge. It's a nice question. I think you have to constantly challenge yourself. Um, it's comfortable doing that for you and only you know your limits. So to me, choose to challenge is an ability to be able to push yourself beyond your own limits and test your own, uh, test your own strength. Challenging your own block, challenging your own mental limits, right? And yeah, okay, that's great. exactly. That's, uh, very nice, very nice. Well, I mean, so so talking about International Women's Day, this is an off script uh, conversation. I'd like, if you were to write a, a one paragraph letter to your 17 year old or your 19 year old or your 20 year old, uh, whatever age group that you think would be, would have been your motivational aspect when, when you kicked in, what would be that letter to you, that version of you based on what you know today and what you've accomplished and what you look back on and encouragement to other people? What would I write in that letter? You know, I would literally tell myself to believe in yourself. And because I think the ability to expect that from someone else is not right unless you do it for yourself. So I remember at 17, I just moved countries. I'd come here from India and the possibilities were endless, but I had no idea how to go about it. And believing in myself to figure it out, being curious, staying hungry are some of the few things that have kind of continuously shaped my thinking into how I want to you know, be for the rest of my life. And I have started becoming that from very early age. So I think that's what I would tell myself. Thank you. I'm also an immigrant to this United States, to the US, been here for 40 years. So I relate to that. And those people who are living in their own countries and you know a lot of our folks with forces, we have teams both in India as well as in the US. You know, I would encourage this is an opportunities out there uh, in front of you. These are limits in our minds that hold us back and the tenacity to go through them, right? I would say that geography is one thing and sometimes we get lucky with the geographical card we're dealt with but i would also say that today um a place like silicon valley is online maybe um you can start building your followership your audience you can start publishing your own thoughts you can have a free mind and anywhere in the world from anywhere in the world and people from all parts of the world will come follow you and i think you can have that platform and it's not just the, where you're located that matters. I would say that that is a very important thing to realize today. Well, very good. I know that um, whether they're entrepreneurs or they're working in a corporate setting, you've done a lot of different things. Not, not a lot of women, like you said, are in the VC entrepreneurial creating funds to create other businesses. But if you're a corporate citizen, so to speak, working for a company, how would you suggest people wake up every day and look at their job there, look at their surroundings? Use a few words. How would you close on advice to the people uh, on forces uh, and even others around the world that might be watching this? Yeah, I was in a corporate setting for 10 years. Um, I worked at IBM. Honestly, that was one of the best places where I thrive, where I learned to be uh, an engineer, to engineering manager, product manager, working on different problems, experimenting, um, learning my soft skills, leadership skills, communication skills. So those 10 years were pretty significant for me in my life. And I would say that, you know, you have an amazing platform that you're a part of, and you're working on some of the most amazing things at Forces. So if I were you, I would definitely take advantage of the environment you're presented, the skills you're presented, the colleagues you're working with, and their skill set to build out an amazing set of skills and network along the way that is going to be relevant for you for the rest of your career. Understood. Well, well thank you very much for that. Uh, I really appreciate the time you spent with us and making this format happen in the virtual setting with COVID. Really appreciate you, you know, spending the time with us and continue to hopefully make connections with our leaders and we continue to be inspire the people that are in our economy. Hopefully, uh, those of those people who are watching, if it's okay with them, I'd plug uh, them to uh, on the links to your to your LinkedIn. Maybe they can connect up with you and, and you can be a, an inspiration in your posts, in your writings. I've seen a lot of your writings online as well. So you can be an inspiration in many different different ways uh, other than just this video after we're done here. So thank you very much for that. You can also follow me on Twitter. I think that's where I'm really active. Uh, my Twitter handle is at Shruti, A-T-S-H-R-U-T-I, and obviously LinkedIn as well. Um, but I do try to really be honest and transparent about my experiences. 
And I recommend that you do the same, you know, share your thoughts, share about what you're learning in your day to day in your job, as I do the same thing, because um, learning is one thing, and then being able to share that solidifies your learning and makes it more concrete into what and real into what you really should be spending your time on. We'll uh, say goodbye for now. And uh, for those of you who are watching the videos, please follow up with uh, Shruti on her Twitter and her LinkedIn page. We will catch up with you guys, the next guest on our interview uh, schedules. Thank you.